Hello friends and welcome into the 49ers Report. I am Tom Downey. We will get you back with Thomas Mott here in just a second. But first, there is some unfortunate news around Jarek McKinnon to get in here on the 49ers. You've heard this before, but it's happened again. Jarek McKinnon, another setback to his surgically repaired right knee. By the way, this is now the third time McKinnon has suffered some type of setback. He returned to practice on Tuesday. That was the good news, but during practice had that setback again with his right knee. John Lynch, the GM, said today it was, quote, not encouraging. That seems like an understatement there because this is the third time McKinnon has tried to come back from that knee surgery and is now going back on the sidelines here again. He had the flare-up before training camp. He begins the year on the PUP list. That makes sense. You don't have to, to hurry him back there. So they bring him back August 6th. That first practice back, the knee bothers him again, and he's sidelined for over 20 days until Tuesday when he again suffers that setback. It's really unfortunate for McKinnon, but at this point, you just can't count on it. And if there is a bright side here for the 49ers, well, they've got some pretty solid running back depth, led namely by Matt Breida and Tevin Coleman, both of whom have shown, with the Niners and more so with the Falcons, in the Shanahan system for Coleman, that they can handle the load as needed. So the Niners will be okay at the running back spot, frankly. They'll still probably be at least average between Breida, Coleman, and if you want to bring in guys like Jeff Wilson too and have him play a role for you, you'll be okay. But you just can't, can't count on McKinnon, and that's a pretty big blow. Frankly, he is trending towards at least starting the season on IR. So here's my question for you guys. Will Jarek McKinnon play at all this year? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I want to see him back out there. We know he's a great athlete. But this is three different times now since the initial surgery. The knee has flared up. I'm going to be pessimistic here. I'm going to say no. I don't think you see McKinnon return this year to the San Francisco 49ers. All right, guys, that is it for me. I'm now going to kick it over to my 49ers guy and yours, Thomas Mott. Hey, 49ers fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today we have a brand new San Francisco 49ers news and rumors video for you guys here on your Wednesday, or depending on when you watch this video. It's very heavy on the news, but also very heavy on the rumors as well. There's a lot going on this week. We're going to start quickly, kind of bullet point, and go news right down the list, starting with the big news, the 49ers officially cut linebacker Malcolm Smith. Yes, you should not be surprised by this because I've mentioned on this show multiple times that I thought the biggest potential shocker for a camp cut would be the starting Sam linebacker Malcolm Smith, and here we are. He has been cut. Was okay in preseason, but really did not do enough to solidify himself at the linebacker position because his backup, and now the heir apparent, Drake Greenlaw, has looked really, really good at the Sam. He's been flying around in preseason, so they're now going to go with Kawana Alexander, Fred Warner, and Dre Greenlaw as their three linebackers as they have officially cut Malcolm Smith. In other news, D Ford back at practice this week after missing basically the entire preseason with his injury. It's unclear if he will go on Thursday, or not on Thursday, but in their final preseason game. Most likely not, but it's looking like he should be good to go for week one. Also back at practice, George Kittle was back on Monday as he's been dealing with that calf injury that's kept him out of every single preseason game. So good to see George back out there. He is expected to go week one as well. And the 49ers have also activated the center Weston Rickberg from the pup list, meaning they can start to work him back onto the field as well. They did quickly sign a corner, a cornerback in Jordan Holland, but that's basically due to the fact that the quarterback, uh, the cornerback Tim Harris Jr. is going on IR with the groin injury. Is that all the news for today? I think I got it all. There might be one more. I was reading that Jalen Hurd is back and is kind of still acting up and he might not be good to go for week one. He's for sure sitting out the final preseason game, but if you're wondering where Jalen Hurd has been, that's the latest news out of 49ers, 49ers camp is uh, I think Shanahan met with the media just yesterday. Okay, like I said, there's a lot of news going on, but I just wanted to bullet point it that way you guys can see exactly what's happening here. The rumor stuff is just as interesting, if not maybe even more so, and we'll start with this. Could Denver be the team that pays us draft picks to go ahead and take a, a quarterback off of our hands? So the NFL Network was doing the broadcast of the uh, of, of, of the Rams, who were they playing? The Rams Denver, actually, preseason game just last week. So Andrew Siciliano uh, and Nate Burleson were in the booth. 
they immediately, like halfway through the first quarter, mentioned that Denver has called the 49ers about trading for a quarterback, that John Elway himself has inquired about Nick Mullins or and or C.J. Beathard. Now, some potential trade offers. I'll give you guys some look about what a trade could look like if the Broncos were to make a move. Remember, though, the reason Denver's doing this is because rookie quarterback Drew Locke is out for an extended period of time with that hand injury. But a potential offer could look like this. A straight-up fifth-round draft pick for Nick Mullins. They're not going to get a bunch for him, guys. We're talking about low to late-round draft picks, stuck in fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe a player in there. That's a, what a, a very realistic possibility, excuse me, of what a Nick Mullins uh, for two Denver trade could look like. Also, they mentioned that you could potentially swap a quarterback and a pick for C.J. Beathard. So they give us Kevin Hogan, and then they also give us a sixth-round draft pick, and we give them C.J. Beathard. So those are kind of your options there on potential trades if you wanted to get rid of one of these two backup quarterbacks. Both are potentially going to play whenever the 49ers have their final preseason game this week, but it's looking like Nick Mullins is going to be the safe guy. He's going to be the backup unless Denver were to offer you a fourth. Like if Denver offers a fourth for Nick Mullins, you take it. You put C.J. Beathard as the backup, but it all depends on what Denver is willing to offer. But at least we know there are some teams that are calling, and John Elway, the GM of the Denver Broncos himself, was inquiring this past week to San Francisco about a possible trade for Nick Mullins or C.J. Beathard. All right, will the Niners trade a quarterback before the start of the season? Will they trade Mullins? Will they trade Beathard? Let me know in the comments down below. And also... We're going to be doing another 49ers mailbag video probably next week. So we got the 53-man roster cut coming on Saturday. We'll have a video then. And then next week, we're probably going to be doing a 49ers mailbag. So use the hashtag 49ers down below and get your comments in, or your questions in, I should say. And I'll answer them on the next San Francisco 49ers mailbag. Again, hashtag 49ers, and then your question, and I will answer it. Go ahead and pause the video and scroll down and do it right now. In other news... It's looking like Nick Bosa potentially is not going to be ready for week one as he is still recovering from that high ankle sprain. Remember, Nick Bosa still has not played during this preseason. He was injured at the very, very beginning, and high ankle sprains can be very tricky, very finicky. Kyle Shanahan said they should know more by the end of this week, which makes sense, right? I mean, you got to give him more time. Day by day, he's going to rehab. Day by day, he's getting treatment. But at the same time, High ankle sprains are nasty little suckers. Look at Cam Newton. He just got a high ankle sprain in his last preseason game, and they're still kind of putting question marks around his week one start, and he's a quarterback. So it's a very tough injury, but the good news is the first couple of games for San Francisco are at least bode well for the San Francisco's defensive line. Bucks, Bengals, Steelers, Browns, Rams. The Bucks and Bengals have very bad offensive lines. So if you wanted to, you know, wait till week three against the Steelers to bring him back, then you should be good to go on the defensive line against the Bucks and the Bengals. But at the same time, it still is a little bit discouraging knowing that Nick Bosa is not ready yet, even though he's been out for the past couple of weeks. With that high ankle sprain, Coach Kyle Shanahan, I mean, what do you want to say, right? He just said, hey, we're going to check him out at the end of this week. We'll let you guys know more probably next week. So be sure to tune in and subscribe to the 49ers official Chat Sports YouTube channel for to be kept up on the latest news www.chatsports forward slash 49ers. Guys, we're like 200 away. 200 of you guys need to go subscribe right now. We get to 1,000, and then there's tons more content coming out here on Chat Sports via the 49ers. So be in. Yeah, let's go ahead and do, let's do subscribe right now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'll also ask the question, when will Nick Bosa return? Give me a week. Give me a Bosa col uh, colon week three, week seven, week one, and tomorrow. Whatever you guys want. When do you think Nick Bosa will return? Let me know in the comments down below. In other news. You thought it was exciting that teams were calling about the quarterback position. Teams are calling about the defensive line as well. And it's no secret, San Francisco 49ers have a ton of extra talent on the defensive line. A position group that once was much maligned is now one of the strengths of the entire team. And GM John Lynch said that the teams, other teams, have been calling about our defensive line. The teams are interested in trading for someone to potentially be a role player on their defensive line. But we're also hearing that maybe they could be trading for one of our bigger name guys. Here's the quote from John Lynch the other day. He was saying, quote, I'd be lying if I told you people haven't been calling. We're still trying to figure it out ourselves what the right mix is. Sometimes that doesn't always mean the 53 most talented guys. 
A lot of discussion about what's going to make us a stronger team. Here are the players I think, if we're talking offensive line, who could be traded. I'll give you three. I think two are more realistic. Number one is obviously Solomon Thomas, who's had an excellent preseason, and someone might, might want to try and resurrect his career in a starting position other or elsewhere in the National Football League. He's going to do well for us this year, I think. He's going to be a role player. He's going to come in. I think he's going to produce more than we've seen in the past. But if someone offered you enough, I'd be totally okay with letting go of Solomon Thomas, the former first-round draft pick. The other name that makes a lot more sense is Eric Armstead. I think Eric Armstead is someone who uh, is looking at potentially being a role player on the defensive line. Now he's going to get a, he's, he's a great player. He's going to play a lot. He's been up one of his better seasons. But at the same time, like I said, he's probably the most appealing prospect on our defensive line because they're not going to trade D Ford. Uh, they're not going to trade Nick Bosa. They're not going to trade any of these guys that are going to be actual starters. But if you were offered the right amount of money, perhaps or a right, right amount of trade stock, then maybe Eric Armstead could be someone that you trade as well. And Sheldon Day we throw in there because he's a backup. But again, I think they like what they see from Sheldon Day as a backup right now, a third string guy, and they're going to keep him on the roster. But there are some potential trades brewing, whether it's the quarterback spot or really the defensive line as well. It's, it, it's rare when you have a surplus at two of the most important positions in the National Football League. 49ers have a surplus of quarterbacks, and they have a surplus of defensive linemen. Now, whether or not those defensive linemen are going to be great is yet to be seen. Whether or not Nick Mullins is actually a decent backup or starting quarterback, we still need to, we still need to figure out. We don't know. But teams are calling, and that means the 49ers have something that they do not have. And finally here, on the 49ers News and Rumors video, Jordan Matthews is looking like a lock to make this roster. Again, we'll find out on Saturday when the cuts are in. We've learned the, the, the full 53-man roster. But it looks like it's kind of a final battle there for the fifth or sixth wide receiver spot between Kendrick Bourne and Jordan Matthews. And Ken Hill head coach Kyle Shanahan has praised Matthews more recently than Bourne. Recently, Kyle Shanahan said, quote, Jordan's had a hell of a training camp. Now, he did say the same thing about Kendrick Bourne, but it was like three weeks ago. So we're still kind of trying to figure out what he thinks about Kendrick Bourne. Both have been factors albeit in a limited role in the preseason, but they've looked good in training camp. I've said this from the very, very start. Jordan Matthews, I remember talking, I remember listening to someone day one saying, Matthews is for sure making this team. Like 100%, he is going to make this team. So I'm, I'm sticking by that, and it's looking like I'm going to be vindicated as Jordan Matthews will probably be the fifth or sixth wide receiver. That is kept right now, and will play a big role in the offense out of the slot in Jimmy Garoppolo's 2019 passing attack. We'll throw up the comparisons here, although I wouldn't put a lot of stock into them. Kendrick Bourne was the leading receiver on the Niners last year who had very few weapons, so... 42 catches, 487 yards with four touchdowns is one thing, but Jordan Matthews was like the fifth receiver on an Eagles team that really didn't want to feature him as much as they should have, and yet he still produced in a limited role with 20 catches, 300 yards, two touchdowns, 15 yards per catch. He also had a big touchdown in the very beginning of that Saints-Eagles game in the uh, NFC Divisional round that really blew that game wide open until Philadelphia eventually uh, you know, messed it up. But at the same time, I will put my, uh, my uh, professional stake in this and saying that I do believe Jordan Matthews is going to make this squad. The rest of them, Richie James practiced, uh, Kendrick Bourne, does he get cut? I don't know. But like I said, it's looking like Jordan Matthews is going to be a lock to make this team. All right, subscribe to our 49ers YouTube page. Listen, we got to get a little house housekeeping here. Got to subscribe to our 49ers YouTube channel, www.chatsports.com forward slash 49ers. When we get to 1,000 subscribers, we can produce more content. It's how the YouTube algorithms work, okay? It's a YouTube thing. We're 200 away, probably about 150 now, and like 10,000 of you guys watch this video every single week. So just help me out. Go ahead and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I don't want to beg, but I would greatly appreciate it if you did. And also, we are doing our 49ers mailbag video next week, so be sure to leave a comment with the hashtag 49ers, leave a question, and I will answer it next week when we do our 49ers mailbag. Just doing some, you know, planning ahead, some little calendar work, but I love the mailbag videos. My best way to interact with you guys, so leave comments down below, and we'll dive into that at another time later on. In, uh, in what should be next week, I should say. All right, there you go. All the time we have for today in our San Francisco 49ers news and rumors video. Obviously, a lot of news, a lot of good news overall, and some pretty exciting rumors as well. We'll see how they pan out. We'll also see how the 49ers look in their final preseason game coming up here in just a few days. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.